what's around the corner. Right. Uh, let's talk stylistically because because you said you're more like secular and Christian. Uh, will it have a different sound uh, than now? Is not forever. Yeah, I don't know. It's you know I don't want to give out the <laughs> secret ingredients before the the meal is cooked. But no, you know I'm I feel a little bit more free now to because. In being partnered with the label, um, there were certain things that they had to have um, to operate on the channels that they were connected to. So right now, um, in the pre-production phase, it's, it's always going to be me and it's going to be authentic. But I actually wrote down a list of uh, key ingredients. I have this big whiteboard in my room and uh, I wrote down key ingredients the other day. And uh, just the core things that I, I want to focus on while I'm working on music. And um, so as far as good melodies that people can sing along with um, and, and heartfelt lyrics and, and what I would call just compelling chordal progressions that um, I just want to move people. So stylistically, it's going to be, as of right now, I'm not going to hold back on the hip hop side. But I'm definitely, the pop stuff always comes out of me. So that's going to be there. Just the, you know, like, call it like the mess, like the song mess or, um, you know, just more of the pop realm stuff. Yeah. But I'm letting the hip hop stuff kind of happen as well. Um, and not, I'm not afraid to kind of express myself in that world. So it'll so, be a mixture. So, because um, you began working with K9 in the beginning, um, like, um, what, what's the song uh, you, you did uh, with him? Bottom of the Ninth? No, the song with about the girl. It, it, it sounded like a Justin Timberlake song um, on his album. Oh, Sister. Sister. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, but will you do some collaborations like that with K9 or Combino or other hip-hop uh, artists or not? Yeah, right now I can't let the the secret out yet because we have some 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 features. But it, those guys and the other thing that I personally want to do is um, because of my personal record, I don't I can't get everything on there. So I've always wanted to do side projects. So mm -hmm. whatever you know, K9 is still a great friend, and we're always talking about collaborating. There's a guy named Promise up in Canada. I know him. Um, I love okay. his songs. Yeah, he's great. We we stay in touch and we're always talking about doing stuff. There's I've got about five or six guys mm -hmm. on on my, you know, we stay in touch and we always talk about collaborating. Mm -hmm. Um there's some there's a guy named Theory Has It. He's just he's just know, the, he's, he's an awesome guy. Hip -hop. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's there's a new, you know, Lecrae, all these different guys that I develop friendships with um Lecrae that I, and you would be great. <laughs> that would be, huh? Yeah. So nice. I don't know. We'll we'll see. It just it just takes you know the right song and the right fit. Yeah. And then if we can't get on the record, we'll do who knows a side project or yeah you know mixtape or something. All right, all right. So um, you're really diverse, and Stevie Wonder and Lauren Hill inspire you. Who who inspire? Who are artists that inspire you more? Can, can you name a couple of couple more artists that inspire? Yeah, you, you know I. I think uh, right now, maybe not the artists themselves, but the songs that they write and the way that they go about it. Um, John Mayer is a big influence. Um, the way that Taylor Swift writes, uh, I like how she 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 tells stories. Um, I love. Uh, I mean, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I bought Justin Bieber's record, and uh, he's got a way. Wait, the way wait. They write. Which which song? Which song is your favorite? I need to know that one. Um, what's I don't know the titles, but but you can sing it. Sing right, right, one. right. Well, no, I just no, know no. the verse starts off. It's like it's a big, big world. Boom. It's a so easy to get lost in it. I just I think it's called Nowhere But Up or Up. I don't know. Yeah. I like that one. But yeah. then on the hip hop side, you know, just all those guys: Common, Lupe Fiasco. Um, Jay Z over the years, and um, I love how right now, like Lupe's latest record, he's maintaining his him his lyrical content as a lyricist, but 
he's bringing in, you know, choruses that people can sing along to. And it's not so underground anymore to where it's, people can relate to it. So, um, all those Kanye, earlier Kanye more than, more yeah. than the later Kanye. Uh, yeah. so, Coldplay, Mute Math, all those guys. I love them. All right. So, so that, that's like secular artists. Who's like the gospel artist that's in your iPod or iPhone or Blackberry right now? Yeah, you know what's crazy? I listen to, uh, well, there's there's a couple. There's a, a girl by the name of Lisa Gunger, who her husband is Michael Gunger. Yeah, they have know, a band. Yeah, yeah you heard a band, a Gunger, um, a big band. Yeah, you Gunger. Yeah, yeah, it's just G U N G O R. Yeah. He's my him and his wife are my favorite by far. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's there's older records that I'll always listen to. Take Six. Um, I've mm -hmm. always loved them and. Yeah. Um, there's a, a girl by the name of Sarah Groves. She's been around. And My wife's favorite. Really, I mean, Sarah? Yeah, I love her, man. Yeah, her first record, Conversations, yeah, it's like um, years and old. What is and what was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's great. Yeah. And then um, I've always liked Chris Rice. And, you know, I haven't heard, I mean, I, I, I don't listen to a lot of Christian hip hop. Um, I, li I listen to it when I want to you know, get fed with the word, but a lot of the times I don't think music has to be the place that I get fed. You know, I think my time with the Lord I can get fed in and then music is, it is what it is, so. Funny that, that you think like that because, um, let's see, um, when I look at lots of Christians, don't know any Christian artists and Christian songs, um, but you make a distinctive um, like separation between them like um, so as a Christian um, according to you don't you don't have to listen to gospel I'm getting <laughs> I'm just yeah. thinking about this question now yeah no I think I think there's nothing wrong with only listening to faith-based music if yeah. somebody desires that yeah. um, my personal take on it uh, I've I've listened to like John Mayer before, um, what's the song called, Heart of Life, and, and I was driving through Kentucky, and I don't have to connect to God through music, I have uh, a connection to God, period, so a yeah. song can can inspire that and, and minister to me, but it's not through the music that I get to know God, it's kind of like, music is similar to television, you know, we watch, somebody watches, a, is it a Christian TV show, I mean, it's like, it's just entertainment. Now, we just have to be careful because what we take in affects us. So definitely, you know, um, I listened to a lot of secular rap growing up yeah. and it didn't affect me, but I have to be careful what I listen to because, you know, that's going to affect the way I think. And, right. and um, so I, I do not advocate, advocate, you know, promote just listen to Christian music, but I do equally say be careful because... <laughs> We get shaped by what we hear and watch so. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, uh, my two last questions. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at uh, the past year, you left Gotti, you went to Virgin Records to do a sort of an audition. What's the biggest life lesson you've learned the past year? Yeah, great question. Out at Virgin, I think it was more of an affirmation from a, from a room full of you know, professional, top-notch, record label people accepted me and, and loved me for who I am, just the way I am. I went in there with the songs that I had off of the old records, and um, they loved me for me. Um, now, that crashed and burned because, the a long story short, whoever found me was let go in the process, and so it kind of just folded. And so the crash and burn taught me at the core I'm on a path the desk the the end is written and I just have to stay persistent and faithful mm -hmm. um but I don't want to have to chase after all these different things and follow after all these scenarios I want to be moving forward just mm -hmm. the way it is and then if somebody like that comes along and can join alongside and we can work together awesome but ultimately, it was a learning experience to 
to just be affirmed by a major label and celebrated, you know. So, last question. What's your favorite Bible verse? Favorite Bible verse? Well, I will say I can't, I don't have a favorite, but I always answer one of the ones that has stuck out to me the most um, is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. And um, it's, I always have a hard time starting it, but it, it basically talks about, um, you know, our inner man is wasting away. Um, our, our outer man is wasting away, but our in, inner man is being renewed day by day. So let us fix our eyes on what is unseen and not, as what is, not on what is seen. Um, what's seen is temporary, but what's unseen is eternal. And it's, it's kind of an encouragement in there. And there's a, I always forget 16, but um, that speaks volumes to me because wrestling every day in a visual world and all the things that are constantly fighting for my attention, um, what it does is it robs me of being able to see the unseen, the most important thing. Because um, if all I do is look at the surface and look at the circumstances, um, I will constantly doubt and question and be dual-minded. And um, it literally takes, I mean, faith in God. And faith is being certain of what we hope for, sure of what we don't see. And if I don't have that faith, then I can't operate um, in that way, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll have a breakdown. I mean, it's just inevitable. I won't be able to, to walk that out. And so, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the interviews. Thank you for being so candid, so open. Oh, thank um, you. It was just great. Um, I